to Good Libations, our show about mixology. We know that this is an adventure in making different types of cocktails, but today I'm actually going to remake a drink that I made in one of the earliest episodes of this show. In fact, it's the Key Lime Martini, and I believe it was made about four years ago, almost to the date. So we're going to redo that drink today just to refresh in our minds how to make it because it's been requested that I re-demonstrate it because I free poured, as I typically do, the very first time that I made it. And the request has been made for me to please measure, even though it goes against my basic nature. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And of course, a key lime martini is a martini variant. And some purists object to the very idea of martini variants. They tend to say, well, we want martinis to be made as God meant them to be, which in their interpretation is gin or vodka with vermouth. But there is certainly nothing wrong with martini variants because you're building on a base, in this particular case, of vodka and adding different ingredients. But the presentation, and by design, is a martini, regardless of how you want to define it. So we're going to go ahead and redo the key lime martini for the benefit of those who don't like free pour. So anyway, we're going to use our shaker, which I always prefer to do with martinis, and I'm going to load it up with ice, and then we're going to put the other ingredients in. So pardon my awkward bend here. And again, as I always like to say, if you're going to be making drinks at a party, you're going to be doing lots of bending. Whether you have an ice machine proper or proper ice storage of some sort. So that's kind of a bit of realism to add to the situation. But at any rate, the key lime martini, we start off with vanilla vodka. And like I said, I'm going to be nice this time. I'm going to go ahead and use the top of the shaker as a jigger of sorts. And you're going to want to put in about a jigger. And I always like to add a bit more, just because. And after that, we're going to go ahead and put in coconut-infused rum, which is the other key alcohol ingredient of a key lime martini. And we want to use approximately half of what we would use of the vanilla vodka. So there goes the coconut infused rum. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and add fresh lime, which is another key important ingredient of the key lime martini. And it's nice if you can use key limes but it's not absolutely necessary. As long as you have a lime that is sufficiently ripe that you can hand squeeze the juice out of it. And as you know, I always lecture about the importance of hand squeezing because that way you're getting the oils from the peel out of the fruit. And that's very, very important because that infusion just adds complexity. And I like to add an entire lime per drink or almost an entire lime. And again, hand squeezing is critically important for all the reasons that I just mentioned. And then after that, we're going to add pineapple juice, which is another ingredient of the key lime martini. And it is thus called, obviously, because it approximates the flavor of a key lime pie, but without the cloyingly sweet dessert type phenomena. And we don't add much of the pineapple juice, just basically kind of a splash. And that way, we're going to get that. And in addition to the fresh lime, it is necessary to add a bit of Rose's lime juice. And you might say, well, why? You already added fresh lime. Well, Rose's lime juice has a particular flavor that is not replicated or duplicated by anything else. It's made in the Caribbean usually from limes from Barbados. So we're going to add a bit of the Rose's lime juice. And again, that's an important, necessary ingredient for the key lime martini. 
And there are other, you might say, off brands of uh, lime juice, but don't even go there. There's no substitute, again, for roses. And some people have said, well, you know, I like to use fresh lime juice and simple syrup, and that sort of approximates the, the type of flavor of roses lime juice. It does not. It's better just to use Rose's lime juice. So we're going to go ahead and shake up our key lime martini here. And we're going to divest it, made a bit of a mess there, into the martini glass. And again, the taste and the appearance of this drink is so delightful. And this is a drink that is much beloved by pretty much everyone, regardless of their palate. People who tend to like dry drinks like this drink, and people who tend to like sweeter drinks like, like this drink also, because it's pleasantly tart with what perhaps could be defined as a hint of fruitiness or sweetness. But again, people who like dry drinks equally like this drink. And I like to add a garnish, of course, and a little tiny wedge of lime with a lime zest attached is sufficient and just squeeze and put it on in. And there you have it, a lovely key lime martini. And again, it's not an overly complex drink, but it is a drink that requires several ingredients. You need vanilla vodka, coconut infused rum, roses lime juice, fresh lime, pineapple juice. And of course, a martini glass is very important for the proper display of the cocktail. And I'm going to and I'm going to take a nice sip of it to make sure that this is as good as it is purported to be and as it sounds. So we shall see. Oh yes, that's very nice. And again, neither sickly sweet nor overly dry, so everyone's palate is satisfied. And this is a good drink for any time of the year, holiday season, um, summer parties, any type of a party or festive occasion is good for a key lime martini. And it pairs very well with all different types of cuisines. Of course, obviously Caribbean cuisine, Pacific Rim, Mexican cuisine, all kinds of different foods um, it's very, very friendly with. So again, that's how we make our key lime martini. And as a general rule, too, I didn't do it this time, but I usually put a spent shell in the shaker before I start shaking it up. I omitted that for heaven knows what forgetful reason, but as a general rule, I like to do that. And again, as I always like to mention on our show, you know, we really love our community of Monrovia, and we like our community to maintain a good reputation. So we want to enjoy our drinks in moderation. We don't want to abuse the use of alcohol. And we certainly don't want to break any laws. So make sure that when we imbibe, that we keep safety in mind and moderation in mind and keep our community safe and well spoken of. And I want to thank you for tuning into another episode of Good Libations, where basically we went back four years and reprised a drink that we made before. We remade it, measuring it, so that you'll know how to do it, measuring it instead of free pouring. Although, again, I personally prefer the free pour. And thank you again for tuning into another episode of Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. And have a lovely time. Enjoy the show. Enjoy your cocktails. Goodbye.